Stan Lee, right, as one of the great comic book minds. I, I don't care what anyone says. Stan Lee is right there. But who's who's truly next to Stan Lee? And I know a lot of you want to say Jim Shooter, but what, what about, let me just throw this one in there. What about Mike Richardson, the guy behind Dark Horse Comics? Dark Horse Comics went from Boris the Bear to multiple Hollywood movies. They created their own universe in the 90s, their own solid superhero universe in the 90s. And we will talk about that on this channel. And along the way, endless ideas, just like heavy metal-esque ideas. And that's exactly what we have today. We have, here we go, the book you've been waiting for, aka Powders, Sex Warrior. Yes, you bang this girl. And she takes the chakra of your banging energy and she's able to channel it and defeat steroids. And what are steroids? Well, they basically look like <laughs> the, uh, the underdwellers from the Gears of War video game series. They're giant, they're bulky, they look like bodybuilders, but they're part machine, they have guns, and they're, they're eliminating humanity. And humanity's caught in this almost like not century long war but it's it's a long war and it encapsulates the entire world and they're jockeying for position and this this new technology the sex warrior comes into being bangs a bunch of dudes and saves the day thanks to dark horse comics it's two issues it's got some it's, it's got narrative flaws there's holes in this saga but the artwork, Mike, Mike McCone, who's still in the game today. Mike McCone, who no one, no one gets for like varying covers and all these other things. Since, you know, people do a lot of things in the indie comic book space. Hire Mike McCone. Just hire him to work on your book. Because even the level and, the, and his quality in these issues, and we project that, we go from like 93 into 2024, and we project that. It's it's head spinning, aka powders. He is a force. He's a force to be reckoned with. So I want to highlight Mike McCone's work because it is admirable. It's fantastic storytelling. You know, we got some storytelling flaws. Mike McCone doesn't do enough silhouettes. Doesn't pull it back the camera enough. Doesn't establish different environments enough or well enough. But this is such a great fun effort. And we have to remember, Dark Horse Comics was a weapon. They were an idea machine. Mike Richardson knew how to put product out and put it in front of people's faces and optimize it for entertainment. Meaning they, they knew how to take an idea, structure it, or work with creators. All of these things that we take for granted from publishers and the editorial staff. To me, it really is. It's Stanley. And it's, it's Mike Richardson because I feel like he, like, again, from Boris the Bear to this type of stuff, it's amazing. All right, AK Powers, what, what, what is Meat Lovers Garfield the movie lasagna doing on my drawing table? Uh, <laughs> that's a story for another time. Hey, 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 I've been practicing so, I, I, I've been just obsessed with making espresso drinks. This is my flat white, so I'm getting better with the proportions of, of milk, steam milk, froth, foam, and, you know, how much espresso goes into all of these different variations. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. But, yeah, this is my flat white, and you guys can tell, look, look the, the, the cream, the milk is a little bit silky. That's the way we like it. Let's get into this. This artwork really blew me away, friends. I'm so grateful to bring this to you guys. There's something to forgotten runs, forgotten books, forgotten talent, forgotten things. Dark Horse Comics. Really, uh, the more I continue, the harder I go, that's what she said, into this channel. The more that this stuff stands out to me. And those are the stories I was talking to you guys about. What we have on the back, we have... Tank Girl and Grendel, both highly reprinted, sought after, and read today. I, did Netflix, 
Does Netflix have or Amazon have a Grendel license? Right. I thought they 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 have something right. And then Tank Girl, uh, Endless, Legendary. So when I was speaking of the Dark Horse superhero world, uh, this is Machine, and look at that illustration. Do, I mean, how does that not get your rocks off? We have another ad here. Here we go. Arcadia. Comics Greatest World. And we have X with the amazing Frank Miller cover. We have Ghost with a Adam Hughes cover. We have Monster. We have Pitbulls. There was 12 of these for 12 weeks. So it was like almost like a year run. And they were each a dollar. But if they, I'm pretty sure you got one, one a week for 12 weeks. Or you got one a month for 12 months. Uh, I'm... But either way, there were $1 entry point books. These are the things a lot of people... Uh, oh, oh, right. Collectible weekly, one buck. So what you would spend $12. Might have been 12 Maybe even 14 It was 12 to 14 You spent $20, essentially. And you would get all your intro books to this giant superhero tapestry. At this time, everyone was trying to create the next new superhero universe. The wild thing is none of it survived. All these superhero universes of the 90s didn't survive. And people want to say it's because the quality was low. It has nothing to do with the quality. It's the people moved on. The industry changed. And reading habits changed. But not on this channel. And we will do an absolutely deep dive on World's uh, Comics Greatest World. Here we go. So we get this like opening narration. And we're just going to, I'm going to catch you guys up just with this one. This is why I like captions. Captions give you information. Who would have speculated in the late 20th century that only a hundred years in the future, this planet would see the most bloody and perverse conflict ever staged by the human race? Question mark. And we continue. Uh, I I have to position it because it is blue. It's it's a blue caption with black lettering. It just doesn't quite fit. It really should be yellow or or uh, a light orange. That in the year twenty one zero five, the whole planet would become locked in mortal combat. I like the sound of that. Youth attempting to wrest free freedom from the aging ruling elite in humanity's first age war. And look at this graphic design here. Uh, it's a little Baroque. It's crooked, but it is. It's it's top notch. I love the inside cover page. And here's our uh, the steroids. These are our Gears of War looking dudes. Now, hey, for now on, when when anyone talks about Gears of War, tell them the look of those those underground dudes are the steroids from Sex Warrior. Yeah, and we get into. Uh, combat, it, like the effects of James Cameron's aliens are still humming and, and hauling. James Cameron's alien is, is just on repeat on every single comic artist VHS player. We have some nice ship design. We have some huh, nice pilot, nice conflict here. We just have your colonial marines going crazy. And these guys are just getting blown apart. They're getting shredded. So, there you go. Captain, what the hell is that? Something better. And then, boom, like this this insect-looking thing busts through. So, in issue two, they break down this insect as... At one time, it's like the humanoids were the models. And that's kind of where the conflict became a stalemate. But eventually, insects would be adapted. The, the anatomy of insects would be modeled for war machines, essentially. And once that became more prevalent, the war would be over. So this is one counter. The, the next counter is going to be our sex machine, our super being, so to speak. She's very much like the girl from Fifth Element. 
And then, you know, we get like somewhat of a video. This girl's like, look, look, I took some hollow vips of it. Do you want me to beam them? And so they get back to base. It looks like the, uh, you know, the Solanco in Aliens. And this girl's like, this dude's like, okay, did, <laughs> did any of you think to film that creature? Yes, I told you I. So this chick's already like, come on, like you're not even paying attention. So she scans the creature and then somewhere it's like by replaying the scan, this like the sex warrior appears. Now, it's not very clear. I think we do need some additional captions, some exposition, but we kind of, we, we can follow it though. And this is what I mean about some of the storytelling issues, because even here, we go from like war-torn street, war-torn street, we're, we're exterior, we're outside, and then, you know, we're inside. But the tone of this, the tone doesn't fit. Because again, like, look, look, tone, tonally, same. Tonally, same. We're, we can't track that we're moving the story. It just all looks like the same environment. Yeah, she comes, everyone starts blasting. I'm on your side. But if you pull that trigger, I'll stick that gun where the sun don't shine and she's just there, like, butt naked. They run full body scans. They see that she's like human, but she has, they, they say she has all, but with strange internal energy patterns. Okay, we're going with it. See how we change the scene and we know we're in a different scene. So we get like a little bit of exposition. Uh, ancient cult of Tantra. So they talk about like tantric sex. They're talking about chakras over here. And look, there we go. Uh, through taint lossacy so taint ossacy it's like so basically through banging uh a sex warrior like me can channel the energy into uh creative or destructive force we don't need this sex yoga plain <laughs> plain rice crap you think so without me the main tids will win let me tell you how it is right so they kind of go into a little bit more detail and she's like, look, and she picks two dudes. Uh, that's all right, but I'm not ready to go into battle until I'm charged up. Charged up. Here we go. I normally need trained men, but the two of you look lusty fellows. Amateurs will have to do. So they get into it. But look at, look at McCone's like faces, his shadows. His application, like even this panel. But see how well these two panels work versus what we were saying earlier. Where we know we're transitioning time. And we know we're in a different environment. So again, all hell breaks loose. The main tids are just wrecking shop. They're tearing everyone apart. I mean, I love this dude's like just getting separated. This dude like that. Look, right here. And... Uh, Part of the description is that the main tits are targeting kind of like unlicensed individuals. So you kind of have to go along with it. Then she shows up and we see her like chakra marks. And she just like, you know, all. It's an all out battle. Great angle shot here. Like we're kind of like looking up. Then we're looking overhead. And she gets thrown around. Uh. It mangled her body, then threw her life, uh, lifeless to the ground. But they get her, and then she's like, hey, uh, <laughs> come here, and I'll show you. I need to replenish my power. So she's then just, it ends with them having to bang her. But I love the sunset here. Like, this pattern, like, you want to say the printing, uh, like, the printing's sacrificing a little bit, but what... A wild panel. I really do love that we're in a sunset here. And we know, like, time has transitioned. Perfect. So, again, issue two. And look at the splash page for issue two. Like, what is happening here? Mike McCone is... He's at a different level with this. And I absolutely love John Ernamus. Aramis, he's our inker, he's our colorist, but what he is doing 
with everything. I the two of them are working in tangent. They bang, she's ready. So she's going to demonstrate. So they have a several here. They they hit them with a sledgehammer. <laughs> they literally hit them with a sledgehammer. They shoot a gun in his face and she basically kisses him and she warps all of his flesh cuz she can control his flesh through her power. Uh, bio steel is harder than flesh, but matter is weaker than spirit. And we see he, he's just like a robotic carcass. She charges up, basically charges up, gets a little bit more heavy, get a little bit more into it. And then we see that like some of her like power and she teaches everyone how they kind of like bang and use the tantric energy. <laughs> this is very new age. Look, you're right, Mark. They're nearly there. It's disgusting. Yes, it's madness. Yes. Uh, what possible what possible point can there be to it? How's it going to help us defeat the servers? Hazel, show them. And she kind of like just bends, you know, bends the gun. He's like, all right. So let's go. So we kind of see that the the humans now, even though they're vulnerable to the bullets, they do have like force fields. They're able to control their strength. And they're just like snapping the limbs of the steroids and busting them up. They attack. You know, the mantids attack some of the humans. They cannot penetrate the humans. The humans don't die. They attack her. She plays dummy. She's like, oh, I got you, bitch. And then boom. They just nuke them. And then essentially, like the, the hive leader, the hive controller, the leader of... And this is where, again, like storytelling, we, we try here with the lighter yellows and the pinks to go from basically a nighttime excursion, excursion into the day. So she summons like the leader of the steroids. He tries to nuke her. She nukes him. I mean, great F-15 here. The dude gets blown away and like we're done. I don't know where she is, but I know she's not dead. It's something to do with that weird stuff she taught us. You're right, Hazel. She taught us a lot about the biomex ourselves, but for me, mainly about women. And then we kind of have her like in the clouds. So it's, you know, like we wrap it up. It's a little bit quick. It's not truly defined what this, you know, what this version of the steroid is. But we we're to assume he's the leader, he's the one to, to kill, and she's able to summon him. She sacrifices herself. I, I have to say, like, this is very heavy metal inspired, but at the same time, you almost like want uh, a six issue, eight issue miniseries out of this. And we just want to keep expanding the ideas and the lore because I think it's there and it's hokey, but it's a lot of fun and it's kind of that that big idea science fiction stuff and it's somewhat post-apocalyptic war always great always fun to read uh you know like you want to see more of this universe so you want to see more of all of this you want to see more of how it works and if there's more of her out there what are they doing what's the next step really good stuff guys